things should be working a lot better today. So anyways, the, with the blue glass, um, it's actually really simple. Um, and maybe I, I made it too, you know, I sort of, you know, ran through it too quick and thought it w was too simple to spend a lot of time on. But remember all your glasses, you know, not all your glasses, but, but glass in general, you know, it's all about transmission. Transmission being synonymous with transparency or light going through objects and either getting scattered around or just going through objects in general, right? So with that blue glass that we, uh, you know, that I pointed out as a, um, uh, you know, what we were shooting for, it's in here somewhere. Hold on, 16. Mm -hmm. This one, okay. So, you know, all that's happening here is, you know, light is traveling through it, getting tinted really, really blue, and that's about it. So there's not a whole lot of base color. In fact, you can pretty much ignore it. So if I come down here to base, I can, you know, and I turn that off, and just for starters, I'll turn off my uh, specular so I get nothing. Transmission is where it's at, you know. So, so I turn my transmission way up, and I tint this color blue, a deep blue, somewhere maybe through there. Okay, let it go. That should. There we go. So you know, right there, I'm I'm most of the way there. Uh, glass is in the the index of refraction uh, of what you know. One point five is is somewhere within glass is range. You know, um, you could refer refer to the chart if you really wanted to get nuts. Uh, they're in here somewhere, maybe back here. Uh, t -t 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 Fourteen. Well, anyways, if you dig back through some of our some of the things that are in here, you'll you'll find out the index refraction reflection uh, is of glass, and then so the only thing that's happening on top of there is is a um, a, a really uh, sharp for the most part um, reflection, right? You know, sometimes you know, like this, if you look close here, it's got a little you know got a little surface abnormality stuff here, so you could bring it down maybe just a, just a tad, so it's not a hundred percent on there. And if you wanted to get nuts, you could you know. Just bump up the the uh, roughness just just the tiniest amount, so so that these aren't incredible you know perfectly sharp, and that's it. I mean that you know that's that's the end of it. You know there's no, you know, you could put a little bit of the of a base coat in there. You know depending on how clean and pure the glass uh, glass is that we're trying to make or whatever. But like I said, for the most part, this is it. There's there's not a lot of roughness. It's, it's clear. It's clean. Lights just going through it, getting tinted like crazy, and coming out the other side. So, um, it like I said, it was kind of interesting. Like it, it just kind of bummed uh, or sort of uh, became a tripping point for some some people, and that's cool. Like I said, maybe I just ran through it a little quick. So that's it. Like I said, your glass, you know, most of your glasses. That's that's the situation. It's all about the transmission um, and what you're, you know, whether you're tinting it or if you need to uh, rough it up a little bit to scatter it or whatever the deal is. But I mean, you know, for the things that are scattered, oddly enough, the specular roughness also uh, feeds into the transmission or reflection, uh, or sorry, refraction uh, roughness, right? So if I bump that up, things start to look fuzzier. There we go. So, you know, this is that, you know, it's like, uh, you know, frosted glass, you see. So so the, the rough, roughness in the specular also feeds into the transmission because it's that surface is sort of roughing it up too. So we you have roughness on the surface for the frosty kind of look, but then a roughness of the specular, which kind of, um, which scatters it around a little bit. Okay, so this is kind of also a, a good cheap way of getting a kind of a fake, um, you know, um, interior, uh, you know, scattering, because this is not as uh, sort of uh, compute intensive as using subsurfaces, okay? So so that was that one. Like I said, it's, re it's really simple. Keep the base down, use a transmission. That's all that's happening. You know, that, that, that was, a, that was what's, what the deal was with all of the last two or, whoa, two or three um, materials that we were doing, the frosted glass, as well as, as this glass. All we're doing is, is, like I said, we're just tinting, tinting what's coming with the light that's coming through the object. Okay. Let's see. I guess it's working a little better. Okay. So then uh, the other one that um, that uh, 
sometimes uh, trip people up a little bit too was the uh, the car paint okay and you know this one I understand too because it's the only one that we really use the coat uh, material on um, so if I come in here and I'm just gonna make it real quick what we were trying to do with the car paint was to use both let me see I'm gonna go get the So I'm going to go get the, the photo of that uh, car paint. There it is. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is, you know, the the coat channel or, or layer, you know, is, is in there for this, you know, pretty much this exact scenario. And that we, you know, we have a base color that's this blue, right? So we, that's obviously our base right there. Okay. Then we have this like flaky stuff, you know, that, that, that we would use our specular highlight it with with a lot of roughness on it and a little bit of color but we have this coat on top here that's shiny okay and that's exactly what like i said that's exactly what um you know this that coat is for you know so i try and so i assign this on there okay okay so like i was just saying so you know we have we had a base color of like a blue Oh yeah, and uh, you know what? Let's see here. Okay, so we had a base color of, of whatever blue, right? But then, like I said, our, our specular, and I'm gonna so I'm gonna turn that off. So we're back to black and specular. I'm gonna keep on, right? So then we have a tinted specular, right? So it's more of a blue green in through here, okay? Which is this stuff right there, okay? Blue, blue green, then shine, right? So then I take that. And I just rough that up, okay. You know, to get get me somewhere, you know. Then you know, you'd have to play with this to figure out, you know, how how rough should it be and how far you want to scatter it around. But you you see, this looks like that layer, especially if I mix in. So I mix in my base, and maybe I come down a little bit more. Maybe you bring in bring up the index. There we go. So you, you know, you see that you see that blue green highlight. You see the blue underneath it. But okay, well, where's the where's the clear coat over the top? And that's the point of the coat, the coat layer. Okay, and you bring that up, and it, it acts just like another specular, but it's going to lay it over the top of it. I'm going to bring my roughness way down to point oh five. We'll say just to kind of make it not perfect. I'm going to bring my Index refraction down just a tad. Uh, oops, 1.35, and there we go. So you see, you see, like if you if you use up your specular highlight, whoops, doing doing something, you can use the coat and you can put it on top to do this kind of thing. So you see where. So this is you know it's, it's I would probably you know you'd probably want to make that a little rougher rougher in the. Uh, the green and the specular highlight but it's you know it's fairly close if you look you know so this color is probably not quite blue green but I think you see what I'm saying you know so we use this we use this for your specular then we put the coat on the top okay so it's like a three-part you know uh, you know shader you know but it's a it's a, this is a rare instance you know like like um, they have coated uh, uh, aluminum that is like that. I think we talked about that, where it's like kind of rough underneath and it's kind of gray or whatever. But then it's um, uh, got a got a literally a clear coat over the top of it. Is another instance where you could use that. So um, that was one thing, like I said, that either we ran past a little quick or whatever the deal was. But coat is is just basically an, another simple specular highlight that you can put on top when you've used your specular highlight or reflection. Uh, for something else, okay. Um, that that was basically the, that was the, basically the you know what I saw that like I said kind of gave some people some problems. So no big deal. So I thought I'd just clarify it again. So okay. So last week um, we talked a bit about um, two types of UV mapping. Okay. Um, and what I got here is so I have a model old an old TV. And what, what we want to do today is go in and the set this object has no materials or UVs, so we want to get it set up so that you could render it. It's basically it's basically a empty uh, uh, you know 
empty vessel or whatever, right? So, you know, what I was going to do is run through it real quick um, and break down, you know, what I would do to get these into shit, you know, uh, to get some shaders assigned and start sort of uh, figuring out which parts I need to bother with UVing and what, what parts I don't, right? Because we talked last week about, you know, how some things, you know, some things need to be set up for mapping and some things don't, okay? Um, and this is a this is a perfect example in that it has, you know, it, it has exactly both, you know, it's got it's got plenty of surface where you could skip it and a few where you absolutely have to do it. So I'm gonna, sh like I said, I'm gonna run through real quick and um, put some of these on there and then um, we'll do the same thing. So if you follow along and pretty much do the same thing uh, within reason, you'll be in good shape. So, okay, so um, like I said, this is an old portable TV. Um, with the old dot, you know, with dials and uh, you know, plastic and you know, probably probably black and white in the first place and everything. So, so obviously, um, just to get some basic uh, shaders put on there. Um, so, I'm gonna assume that the body was like a you know was a plastic of some sort, right? So, you could say, well, you know, if you want to get nuts, you could sort of paint little wear wear bits on there and things like that, or you could keep it kind of simple, and I'm gonna, so I'm gonna put it off to the side here. I'm gonna try and share the screen. Okay. So, so I'm gonna call this my TV plastic body, right? Throw it on there. Sign this here. And so I would have a, a shine on it. Um, keep it a little bit rough. I, I turn my index of reflection down, refraction down to about 135. Choose a color, maybe like a crappy cream color, like somewhere in through there. Uh, like that. Okay. So, you know. This is just a start, right? So I'd probably come back here and maybe attach a noise to this just to kind of mess up the surface a little bit, like I was saying. Um, you know, so it's not all perfect, but this this is a start just to get something on there. Okay, um, the screen. So I'll get myself another tab. Arm standard surface. Call it TV screen. Select. Sign. Okay, so now this one, obviously, you know, if I'm going to do anything besides just have it sit there, um, it's going to need to be mapped, right? Um, if I want to put, like I said, if I want to put anything on there, we're gonna we're gonna need to map that, right? So I'm going to get my mapping tools. The beauty about the, you know, about this this um, object is that it's it's perfect. Oh, good lord! It's perfectly flat. Oh my god, what did I do? Okay. UV, UV editor. Okay, so it's perfectly flat. So all I gotta do is is put a planar uh, map right on the front and just let, you know, just project right toward it. So we don't need to, you know, do anything really spectacular to it to get it to uh, behave pretty nicely. So I'm gonna come into this view. And remember, this was my planar uh, uh, planar map. Okay, click, and I should get. Oh no, no I want best view actually. Sorry, I'm gonna do best plane, which is gonna um, while in this viewport, it's gonna project right using this viewport. Okay, so if I come in over here. Oops. Okay. UV best plane. Enter. Let's try that again. Object. Object. Hmm. All right. So I'm gonna try and isolate it. Oh, no, it didn't work. Object mode. Screen. 
to isolate the object or attempt to. There we go. All right. UV, best plane. Enter. It should get me nothing whatsoever. Let's try that again. So best plane mapping is should be the one that goes in and and once again chooses the best plane to assign this to, meaning that which you know which direction is going to uh, apply the uh, apply the UVs the best, which would be you know front straight on, which and it's uh, not doing it. So let's do faces, straight faces. Be editing. Oh, it's they're on there. Okay, so here, here you see. So I have my. So it did it. It just didn't show it to me properly. So that's that's great. So um, when I went into my UV editing workspace, I got what I was looking for. I don't know why it didn't didn't show it to me in the standard one. But so now I have, I have some UVs on there. And the nice thing is, is that it didn't stretch them to use the whole screen, right? So I could place this properly. If I want, you know, like if I put a, a TV size image in there, it's not going to stretch it up and down or anything. It doesn't have to be square. So there is a little wasted space, but uh, you don't have to use it, right? So to make a surface for that, which I haven't done yet. Okay. So TV screen, uh, object mode, select assigned selection so for this one I'm gonna map it because um, I want to put you know something on the TV so I would just grab a file um, with in the uh, the base color okay and then come in here so I have my file it already it also comes with a place to 2d textures but since I have UVs on there it's basically just gonna say what are the UVs we looked it up or you know it, it they're already on there they're right here so it's going to work, right? So I go there and and I get my TV screen. And the nice thing is, is I can remember that once you assign the file, you can see what it's going to look like at, on the screen, right? So you can see that it's obviously going to be stretched. So all I have to do to, to fix this grab my UVs and stretch them into place so that it's using the whole using the whole thing like so okay so now if I turn on textures oh wait textures right there it maps on there properly okay so I'm gonna go back out to object mode Okay, so, and this is one that would be great to have um, emission on because, you know, it's a TV, so you could, if you turned up emission a little bit, when you render this, it's actually going to give off a little bit of light. In fact, if I go like this, it may already, uh, it's, a, it's actually the only light source in the thing, so let's see what, so it gives off a little bit of light, okay, but... It gives off just a color, right? So I want, would actually want to take and find the emission area. Here we go, emission color. If you can see that. Okay, and take the same uh, television image and put it, oops, there it is, in the emission color, right? Oop, there we go. So now instead of just kicking off one color like it was doing when I turned it on, okay, unless I map it, it's, it's not going to know you know, it's just going to basically start emitting light. So if I do that again, it should start getting, there we go. And if you kick it way up, you know, say go to here, it looks like the only thing that's on. There we go. So you're actually getting light down on the table and all that good stuff, right? Okay, so the only other, while we're in here, the only thing uh, really to worry about is that, you know, since the uh, TV screen would be like a glass, um, all you need to do is, is uh, 
have a nice highlight. Um, 1.5 for an index or uh, reflection uh, will be great. Uh, roughness, I'm going to turn down to nothing because uh, just so that it's nice and shiny. And we're pretty much all set with that, right? So, um, so you saw that you know in the first first instance I ignored the mapping. In the second instance, I bothered with the mapping because it's important, right? So. It, it's you know you you pick and choose right so okay so now we have our bezel that's around the outside of the TV um, generally these these would be plastic uh, lots of times they were just kind of uh, kind of a silver so I'm gonna make another object or another uh, surface okay AI plastic silver okay so I'm gonna turn this turn down my base quite a bit base color and I'm gonna rough up the specular highlight okay I'm gonna turn it up a little bit my refraction okay and then maybe just bring a little bit of that base back which will you know give me sort of a gray color so here I'm getting kind of a silvery gray this is probably a decent place for a um, a coat color and there we go. So you know, I you know, you wouldn't have to mess with mapping this because it's just kind of a silvery, silvery plastic. I'm gonna so I'll throw a light in there. Okay. Let me get a light. Just so we can start to see what we're getting out of this. Okay. So like I was saying, the nice thing is, is lots of times you can skip, you can skip mapping, and sometimes you must map things. You know, to, it all it all depends on the object. Ooh, that thing's not very bright. Let's see here. Oops. Fourteen hundred. Oops. There we go. Okay. So now we're starting to get some color in there. Okay. So you see, I got a decent, sh you know, got a decent shine on the on the plastic. I'm getting. Obviously, the screen is is looking fine. The bezel is. Not sure I signed that properly. So I'm gonna come back. Select it. Right click or yeah, right click, assign material to selection. See if it updates. Okay. So it's kind of shitty. So I'm gonna um I'm gonna bring my code up a little bit more so it has a gives off a little more uh Gives off a little more uh, sheen. There we go. So we get kind of getting a nice sheen going in the corner. Okay, that's not so bad. So, okay. Now the next order of business is uh, so this outer piece. Okay, I'm gonna. So this outer plastic part. Lots of times uh, would have a. A fake uh, wood texture um, thrown on there um, which is what we're gonna do and it was literally like sort of printed on the plastic so we'll just take this wood from the other day um, and put that on there okay so just like the face now you can you can look at this and you, know, you can make a decision on whether or not you want to unwrap all these pieces or not meaning like you know remember remember how with the the table it sort of stretched along the sides here this will probably we'll probably get away with it here and not have to mess with that. So um, that's what I'm gonna try and do. So I'm gonna make a yet an uh, yet another surface. Okay, grab another Arnold shader. All right. AI TV front fake wood. And just since I know I'm already going to use that surface, I might as well just plug it in ahead of time. So I'll go get a file. Okay. So 
So I'm going to point to that texture wood that I liked right here. And I'm going to, since it's plastic, I'm going to come back to my fake wood and see how this seems a little, eh, no, it's not too bad. So it's got a little bit of roughness. I'm going to bring down the, see the index of reflection, refraction is more towards uh, glass. So I'm going to, I'm going to bring it down to, oops, more towards a, a, a plastic. Like I said, I like one, one, three, five is, is nice, which gives you a little bit of sheen right here, but it, you get a decent uh, Fresnel reflection that falls off to the side here. Okay, I'm gonna select that piece back in the interface. Okay, and oh, geez, I didn't even know I did it. Okay, right, right click, right click, right click, right click. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'm gonna try and just drag it on there instead. Okay, so it's on there. So um, you know, this is decent. I can I can live with this. So um, you know what you're gonna see. So if I render this, I, you know, you're gonna get what we saw before, and that you know it doesn't since it doesn't have any texture coordinates, it doesn't know what to do with that texture, right? So it's all you know looks like crap, right? Doesn't look right. So what we're gonna do is come in, grab the object UV best plane because we're just you know like I said we you know we're gonna try and get away with just projecting that this wood in this direction right onto the face of this thing okay so if we go UV best plane hmm. so I'm gonna select all the faces enter there we go okay so it takes a second to sort of kick in so so you see now I get I have uh, you know UVs just just projected right onto you know, right through it. So, like I said, we can if we inspect what what happened here. You know, you're going to see that you know where it's going to sort of go through the object here and through you know right through here. You see how this is? These guys are still on top of each other. So if I grab these UVs, let's see? Mm -hmm. No, it's nice. There's like a, it looks like there's like a little bezel in here, right? So, so, so most of these are getting exposed, which is great. So we don't have, we don't have ones on top of each other. So if we render this, we probably got away with it pretty nicely. So I'm gonna zoom in here to see, you know, what it looks like right here. Do a quick render, and it's not too bad. It's okay. It's uh, you know, like I said, like sometimes you can you can get away with it, and sometimes you can't, especially. You know, with something like this where you're going to be out a little bit, you can probably just not bother untangling things or, you know, it's not that bad anyways. It's like it's out of focus. Okay, so, um, so, so we only, so at this point we've only bothered with uh, mapping, you know, the, the face and the wood because these are special, you know, textures that we want to put on there, okay? Now, another scenario that we run into with this um, with this model is that we, we already have I've got a few different things in, in here so so here we have a map set up for um, for the labels right so you know somebody's gone in and you know with Illustrator or, or uh, you know whatever Photoshop or something and, and made the two uh, knob dials okay so this is this this is a scenario I was talking about where you know. I already have art. Now I need to make my UVs work for the art versus the other way around. You know, sometimes you get to dictate how it's going to work because you already you don't have a map and you're going to paint one or whatever. But in this scenario, you know, you have a map. You know, I already have this map, so I'm going to try and use it. Okay, so what I'm really going to concern myself with here are the the two these two dials, and that's that's where these these guys go, right? So you know, they're two objects, and they're they're two objects because um, you know, you want to be able to you know, move these dials separately. Oops, even though they're not two objects. Well, in reality, you chop this one off so that these dials could be turned if you wanted to. Okay. So I'm going to go and make a quick material, another quick material with. Okay. I'm going to call them um, AI dial labels. Okay, 
And since I already know I'm gonna plug in the uh, that color, I'm gonna go get a file node, okay? And point at that that map. Uh, class 19, this guy, okay. Now, um, they're actually pointing it out, which is kind of interesting, as a, as a blend uh, map so that you could make one material different than the other. We're going to just use it as a label here, um, but you can sort of use it as a channel to select the two. Um, uh, I won't get into that, but okay. So I'm just going to make it a little um, a little rough just to kind of rough up that um, the, the highlight that's on there, just saying it's kind of a plastic with kind of, once again, just kind of a rough surface. Okay, so now if I assign this to these two objects, oops, worked. Shit. Oh my god, I hate this computer. Okay. Object, object. There we go. Assigned a selection. Okay. So now you see they turn black because we don't have uh, we don't have any render um, or sorry we don't have any UV so it doesn't know how to put them on there. Um, as you see right here, it's gonna so it's gonna show me so it's gonna show me the map, which is a nice feature. So um, when you select an object, it, it shows you what the um, you know the, the the current sort of main map is assigned to it here. So here it's, it's showing me that the dials are assigned to the um, this piece of art, right? So what we do, and like I said, we you know you could go in opposite direction. You could you could uh, you could kick out uh, um, the uh, sorry. You could um, you could knock out a UV map. You know that we saw last last week where you just uh, select. Uh, sorry, once you have a set, you can you you. Uh, which one was that? Tools. It's one that kicks out the uh, the map. Uh, da -da 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 -da. There. Uh, check our map. There. Uh, yeah, UV snapshot. Sorry, UV snapshot is that one that that kicked out the all the lines and gave you a, a map that you can then like paint over the top of or whatever. So, you know, you can come at it from that direction, but I'm going to come at it from this direction instead. So. So what we're going to do here is um, same thing is get a best plane, select the faces, enter, do the same thing down here, object mode. But first, I'm actually tell you. Well, no, I'll, I'll figure it out later. So UV, best plane, best plane. <clears throat> Oops, sorry, I got to select the other object. Hmm. Okay, let's try it again. Object mode. UV. That's fine. Wow. Let's like some faces. Enter. And it blew up. <clears throat> okay, sorry everybody. I seem to have crashed again. Ooh. Oh, oh no. That's not good. Teletair. Alright. Fun. Yeah, seems to have taken a dump. Okay, fantastic. This is why you turn auto save on, but I don't think it's on on my machine here, so probably gonna lose everything. And task, and task. So if, if you don't know about uh, the task manager, if you hit Control Alt Delete, you'll get your task manager, which is allow, allows you to force programs down without rebooting your computer. Usually things respond. Sometimes you have to go into the actual process if it's taken that big of a dump. 
as this has. Maya and process. There we go. So that forces that forces it down. If you don't, if you can't do it from here, if you go into processes and find your process, that that's the thing that really will force the thing uh, to the ground. So fun, fun, fun. So glad this machine is fixed now. So obviously things are way better. It may find file. Nope. Okay. Great. Great. So I'm going to pick off, uh, just pick up where I left off um, because I've gone through a lot of what I wanted to talk about with this anyways. Is You know, once again, it's just the, the, the few different types of, you know, scenarios that you can hit. Not needing maps and making making some noise or, or making, you know, noise maps or whatever. Um, you know, adapting to to maps that you already have by you know stretching and moving, or uh, you know using uh, I was I was going to also plug in some uh, some noise maps like to the plastic to kind of mess it up, but uh, I'm probably not going to bother with that. Okay, so what I was trying to show you was so we're going to make remake this real quick. Attach a file to the color channel of. Okay, attach a file to the color channel of this shader. Mm -hmm. Use this guy as my uh, sort of my label or whatever you want to call it, my decal. Select the two pieces I want to apply it to this inner and this inner. Right click, assign. Make sure I turn on my texture previewing so I see what's going on. Nothing's going on. So I come in here, let's plane. See now I'm getting my actually getting my yeah my prompts yeah. So enter and there you go. So okay so so if I grab my the UV that that works for this I'm gonna set, I'm gonna put it on let, let's see. So this would be the lower one, um, the lower uh, sorry the lower dial. Okay textured. Oh, I'm just gonna like I said, I'm just gonna basically adapt to what this art already looks like and just make it fit. Luckily it's still circular, so it works like a champ. Don't know why I'm not seeing it though. Let's get a light and see if I have anything. So sadly I lost my you know my front my, my front face and all that stuff and like I said, this is why you turn on. Um, this is why I turn on autosave. Okay. Attribute editor. I think it was like twelve or fourteen that worked. Okay. Zoom in here and see. Got anything? There we go. So they're I don't know, they're not showing up in the viewport, but they're showing up here. So, you know, these I adapted those to fit on there essentially, you know, um, by just moving it in, you know, around the, the decal sheet, okay? So best plane, select those guys, enter, come over here, and object mode. Object. Like faces, enter. There we go. Okay, so I did great. Same thing. I just grabbed the shelf for this one and use a, a different part of of the map, right? So, you know, you can have you know a you know a map doesn't necessarily have to just be for one object. You know, you can share maps uh, with other objects and you can you know put them on any way you like. Okay. Um, oh, that looks funky. Uh oh. Hmm. How odd. Um, so yeah. So so. Anyways, I'm, so I have two different objects sharing the same surface and also sharing the same map. Right. There's nothing you know saying I couldn't plug this also into another type of uh, uh, surface if I needed to or 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 whatever. You know, I could. You know, somebody's basically put all these little decals onto one sheet. Right. And somewhere else 
on here there was a little label that you know maybe up here that said comment or something like that like a little brand thing or you know might be right there so you know all the all the all these details could be just on one one map in the end you know not, like I said nothing stopping you from putting them all together okay so previously before us took a dump on me you, you know you saw that we we mapped wood on the on the front we just used a um, you know a sort of a shiny plastic surface on there we used a shiny plastic on the back I was gonna loop around it sort of uh, you know add another add a noise in here just to add a little subtlety to the plastic to just sort of you know give it a little wear you know give it a little look of, of wear and um, you know and then we did the screen that gave off light okay so you got a lot of different scenarios here oh yeah and then I was just gonna make these uh, these guys like a plastic chrome um, you know real simple just keep the surface simple you know so um, like I said you see a bunch of different scenarios here just regular surfaces surfaces that you know require some mapping some surfaces that require some slightly weird um, you know the the emissive uh, em emission in the um, uh, on the surface uh, coming off the the TV screen um, is a different type we haven't sort of played with too much but you see how easy it is to work with you basically plug the color into the both the base color and the emissive color so that you know they you have the two different things are uh, the uh, so you have the two different uh, um, the same file going into the same channel or the two different channels to give you both base color but also what color it should be spitting out and, and by mapping that to that uh, the screen image that's that's in there you get uh, you know you get a, a pretty decent looking TV screen put a little shine on it and boom you're all set so Can that you show the connection real quick sure which connection um, to make it the screen yeah okay And that's the the cool thing about it, you know, about these kind of, uh, you know, node based, uh, that, uh, you know, layouts like this is it, it makes it really easy to understand how things get sort of sewn together, right? So I just grab another, sur I grab a surface, I'm gonna map it, to, map it to the base color, okay, file, monsters. Okay, so that just, you know, if I throw that on there, all that gives me, when there's light in the scene, and you'll see how, you know, it doesn't look, oops. It's not mapped, so I gotta quickly map it. Ooh. Well, I'll adjust it later, so, but if I render this, you'll see it just, it doesn't look, it doesn't look like it's giving off any light, right? So. That's why we turn up the emission right there, okay? But by default, there's no color map to it, okay? So when I render it, it blows out the image that's underneath it, okay? So all I gotta do is take my color, map it to emissive emission color down here. So I'm sharing the same, the map that goes into the base color goes into the emissive color. The emission is just how much, remember? so. Sadly, they you know they don't these things don't match up, which is kind of a bummer. This should say emission weight, but it just says emission. Um, but that's what this is. So you could map if you wanted them map the emission amount. You could change that, but instead we're just going to map the color. So emission color is right. Emission weight is this. Like you know, sadly, like I said, they don't they they should keep those things. They should keep those things straight, but they don't. So okay, so if we render. There we go. So instead, we start to get something that's kicking off light. Um, and don't forget, you know, in these instances, you know, even though this this slider only goes to one, if if for some reason you think it needs to go to three, you can type in three, and it'll take that, right? You know, most of these sliders will allow you to put in a number, sort of the, you know, the 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 slider range is more of a suggestion than a hard and fast uh, rule. So if it made a lot of sense that this kicked off a whole lot of light. And so I'll, let me fix this real quick. So grab my UVs, scale them so that they're using the whole image. Okay. Then reason, click. Now it maps onto this, you know, map using up the whole image properly. If I render this, I should get a very bright TV. There you go. That's 
not too bad. So if I, especially if I, you know, you know, this would this would be sort of a good example of like, you know, when we were lighting that room, um, you know, if you wanted to have the whole room lit by a TV, you know, you could get away with that by, you know, just really coming in here and cranking up the, and what you know, once again, this is not the best way to do this, but this is this is the way that makes sense for uh, this type of object. So I'm going to turn up to 10 and it really should kick out a load of light, which it does. But you see how grainy it is and stuff like that. You have to turn up the, uh, you know, some render settings a lot uh, higher to sort of get that to not uh, not do that. But it's kind of cool. It works works pretty well. Okay. So like I said, so so this is, you know, this is a, a good example of, you know, here's an object that, that you have, you, you know, you either made or you found or whatever the deal is, sort of getting it in shape to to work and, and you know, do more with, you know, just breaking it down and figuring out, you know, what kind of surfaces would be on what and whether you got to bother with mapping them, whether you want to map them, you know, like, you know, once again, like if, if you, if your idea with this TV is that it's really old and you're going to sort of cruise around it and, you know, it, it, it should be a real mess and you wanted to put scuff marks and drips and who knows what on it, then you'd go in and you'd tear it apart and you'd map it, you know, um, in, you know, in this instance where I'm just trying to make it kind of funky, I wouldn't bother with that. You don't have to bother, you know, like you could, uh, let me go through making a real quick surface for the plastic again to just kind of make it kind of funky without the pain of of mapping, you know. So Arnold, standard surface, drag and drop. Okay. But for my base color, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do a solid fractal okay which now you know obviously I'm getting something really weird here okay so I'm gonna put a bit of a color in there like that nasty color I was looking at sort of pukey pukey off yellow green there we go okay okay so then my ratio if I mess with my ratio I sort of come back here okay that makes it more more one color than the other oh, wait no that's in my amplitude okay okay next up I'm just gonna mess with my 2D texture, 3D texture, and scale that up so it's big. So let's see, this just kind of creates a light junk kind of, just kind of off off kilter layer. Let's see the threshold. There we go. Okay. So with my threshold, I can. That's what I was looking for. The easiest way to do this is that is um, is to turn this guy off. Or uh, uh, sorry, go into. Um, I turn my light off. Hold on. I'll bring my light back down so I can see something. Okay. And you know, sometimes it, it just you would almost rather just map the thing, but uh, depending on how boggy your machine feels, you might not want to. Okay. I'll grab my light. Turn the light back on. Okay. Do a Arnold render, but do a selection. So if I select my TV, come in close. Okay. So we saw this before where, you know, Arnold, the this isolate selection is really cool because it also will isolate, including um, anything else you anything you select but also anything you select in hypershade so if i come over here and i select just my solid fractal it's going to show me exactly how it's mapping it on there right so i can i can come over here and i can mess with it and you're going to see you know the live change right on the object okay so that's too much it's not deep enough this is 
amplitude. There we go. Okay. So the amplitude kind of gives me a, it sort of increases the, uh, the uh, contrast between the two colors. And I'm just going to, this is sort of the amount. And I'm just going to make it, like I said, kind of subtle. Let me turn up the frequency so that's a little messier. Oops. And then if I select my material, it's going to show what it looks like right on the material. It's a little much. Maybe keep the ratio down some more. Threshold down a little bit, or sorry, the other way. There, now I just have some little sort of gunky bits. I rotate around. There we go. So I got this mess, this mess down there. Some crap over here. That's not so bad. So if I select over here. Yeah, so what I get is, you know, some miscellaneous junk here. This is no, another good example would be to dump this into the uh, the shiny, uh, the specular color, just to kind of rough off the, the surface so that it's not evenly, you know, clean uh, and shiny. Okay. So, so like I said, I'm not going to go through the, I'm not going to go through all the ones that we did, but so the, the, you know, this is out there. The, um, the file is out there. Um, you know, I, I, I'd like you to play with it and, uh, you know, we'll be here to uh, talk about it. It's only seven 30. So, um, please kick it around and, and, you know, try some different stuff with it. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's it. Thank you very much.